Welcome back. Uh, I'm recording this directly after the last part, uh, so I'm still not going to see, like, video comments on, on the first one. Um, but uh, where I left off was we were just instantiating the browser, and immediately we ran into this interesting problem of URL validation. Um, but now we're, we're done that, so we're going to talk about the web browser itself. Uh, something that's interesting here is that the I, I made the design decision that the web browser will always start maximized. Um, I'm not really a UI designer, so I, I kind of had to make these design calls, and I tried to keep it to what just kind of felt right to me, and it felt right to me that a browser should always start maximized, but if there's like any pop-ups, then they won't necess necessarily start maximized. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, that's you know first sort of UI design call that that I had to make. Uh, we're going to be seeing you know a lot of those kind of trade offs uh, as we descend into the web browser itself. Um, so right off the bat here, you can see that this class actually has two nearly identical constructors. And usually I like to avoid this kind of thing. Uh, I don't like to have two functions that do a nearly identical thing. Um, the issue is that because this is a constructor, many of these um, fields here or, or members are actually read-only. Um, and so they can only be set in the constructor. What I would normally do is I would make another function um, that's just like, you know, a generic uh, function that both of these constructors call, so I don't have to repeat all this code, but because so many of these are, are read-only, uh, I can't do that, and I could just decide to make them not read-only so that I could <coughs> so that I could um, condense them into one function, um, but I want them to be read-only because, you know, throughout the entire rest of the code, uh, I don't, I want some sort of alert if I try and change those values because I shouldn't be changing them, right? Uh, and so, uh, and so I just went with this, um, and, and that's just the trade-off. But the only difference between these two constructors is that one takes in the additional argument, which is the URL. This one does not, uh, so it'll just open a blank uh, pop-up window, basically. <coughs> uh, and this is used when, like, creating a uh, when you click the new window button in the toolbar. Uh, but this is sort of the main constructor. Um, so right off the bat, we take this URL and we assign it to a um, to a member, and we don't actually give that to the web browser uh, control yet because there's a few things that I want to do first. So if we actually look where this is used, let me bring this up a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> so this is where it's actually used. It's used in the web browser load event. Uh, I, I want to go on a brief tangent here to talk about the difference between the load and show events in uh, C Sharp. Oh yeah, I should probably, even before that, I should say, this is a WinForms app. Um, why did I decide to make this a WinForms app instead of like WPF? Uh, it's it's literally just because when I um, first created this, um, I knew that I could quick like quickly prototype uh, what I wanted to the UI to look like by just dragging and dropping a web browser control on a blank window. Uh, and that's it. And it took like 10 seconds, right? And so, <clears throat> uh, and that's just what I was familiar with. Maybe it's possible to do the same thing in WPF, but maybe it would take more like, you know, a few minutes because I would have to look up how to do that because I'd never used WPF before. I was just familiar with WinForms. Like I said, I'm not a UI designer. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, so this is a WinForms app. Um, but back to the point I was going to talk about. Um, the difference between load and show. Um, so, in C Sharp, there are two events um, that both happen right away when you open a form. Um, there's the load event, 
and there's the show event, and I think a lot of people don't even know the difference between them, um, but there is a, a substantial difference. There isn't just, like, one that's better than the other, and they aren't, like, the same events either, like, just a different name. They, there is actually an important difference between them, which is that <clears throat> the load event happens before the form is shown. So if we go down to where I assign this URL, right, um, if I were to do this when the form is shown, then you you would hear the like little Internet Explorer click if you had that enabled in your, your sound settings from it navigating because the browser was already shown. Uh, it was already loaded with its like default URL, and then you're navigating it to the new one. So the difference is that um, <clears throat> if you do something on the show event, that's actually going to cause it to like re-render out. Like, if you set a property on a control in, in the show event, that's going to cause it to, like, actually, you know, change to that property as opposed to just coming into existence with it. So by setting the URL here on the load event instead of the show event, um, we're actually causing it the browser to just use this URL when it starts, which is what we want. Um, <clears throat> but even before we do that, there's a bunch of stuff that we have to do first. So... The first thing that I do after, you know, just ensuring that the, the browser exists is enabling the Flashpoint proxy. Uh, not the new Flashpoint proxy that was created by Crumb. I don't know why we have two products that are both called Flashpoint proxy now, but this is the old-fashioned one. This is the one that is on Flash and stuff. And literally, this is exactly identical to... Um, that, except it's not a DLL, it's just a direct C-sharp translation uh, that, you know, we can just call from, from here. Um, <clears throat> so, so this does the exact same thing as that, it serves the exact same purpose. Um, <clears throat> and then down here, we have the Custom Security Manager, and this is the, uh, the next sort of topic that I'm going to talk about today. So, if we go into this file... Um, there's a bunch of interesting stuff uh, going on here. So one of the issues that I was trying to solve with the Flashpoint Secure Player is that it's possible to go into your internet options and into the zone settings and just disable ActiveX controls in the web browser altogether, uh, system-wide. Like, you can just disable them. And normally on its own, that's not a problem. Like, uh, it might even be, you know, a good security conscious decision to go in and, and disable your ActiveX controls. Uh, but the problem with it is that the entire point of the Flashpoint Secure Player is to be able to run these ActiveX based games. And uh, you might have gone in and disabled that and then uh, maybe you didn't even realize quite what it did and then you completely forgot about it. So it creates this troubleshooting problem of will it work? Will it not work? Uh, we have no idea, right? And so what I wanted was for ActiveX controls in this specific application, right? I don't want to change the system setting. I want to be respectful of your system setting. But in this specific application, because it only makes sense if ActiveX is enabled, I wanted them to always be enabled, and thankfully it is possible to uh, change the setting for a particular application uh, by using a custom security manager. So that's what this class is about. So right off the bat here, when we create this, uh, create this object, one interesting thing here is that the web browser control can't know that we're here, right? So we have to actually like tell it, hey, you know, I'm here, I want to uh, be able to change these uh, security settings for this application. And so we tell it that we're here by using this uh, proffer service method. Um, fun fact, proffer is actually a word that means to politely offer something, which I didn't know before writing this. Let me know in the comments if that was something that you knew. Um, but yeah, I looked it up in the dictionary. <laughs> it's a real word. Um, so after we've told the, the web browser control you know, that we're here, most of this is just uh, using the default settings. So whenever I return this inet e default action uh, value, basically that just means use the default implementation of this particular 
particular function, and that that's what most of this does. We come down here to the first interesting uh, function that we've implemented, which is map URL to zone. Um, so Flashpoint, uh, if you don't know, it's just it, the way it works is there's just a server that's running on the same uh, machine that you're currently on, and then everything connects to that. And so that is kind of similar to to what an intranet is. Uh, so I decided that the best zone to use is zone one, which is the intranet zone. You might think, you know, why not just use uh, the trusted zone where, where everything is enabled, but I don't necessarily want just everything to be enabled. I want the right settings to be enabled, and the intranet zone comes the closest to describing the situation that's going on here. So um, I set this to one uh, for the intranet zone, but there's a few exceptions, right? So when I return inet e default action to use the default Im implementation, that's going to uh, ignore this setting, right? It's going to cause this to just become ignored. So I set this at the start, but if I return this, then it undoes uh, this setting. So the case that where I ignore the intranet zone setting is if the URL is a file URL. Um, the Flashpoint Secure Player is meant to be used um, to to browse uh, Flashpoint's sort of fake internet, uh, and so if it's being used to visit local files, then that's immediately kind of suspicious. So, in that case, you know, I go back to just the default security settings because uh, I don't want to create some sort of security issue there. And so, if you're browsing the local disk using the Flashpoint Secure Player, uh, then it'll just behave like stock Internet Explorer, and it won't uh, go enabling all of these, uh, you know, extra settings, uh, just because that is kind of unusual behavior. So we ignore it in that case. <clears throat> and then we also test for it again down here. There's a flag passed in that tells us if it's a file or not, but we also specifically test ourselves just to be extra sure. So if you're curious, uh, the, the test internet URI implementation, it just looks like this. Uh, we check that if the URI uh, says it's a file, uh, using its is file property, and then we also sp check specifically if the URI is HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP, uh, because those are the protocols that the Flashpoint proxy is set up to to catch. Uh, and so, if it matches, then we know that it will go through the Flashpoint proxy, and so it is safe to continue. So then we get to uh, process URL action and. This is where sort of the main meat of the uh, implementation here is. Uh, so the way this uh, function is structured, uh, there's policies and there's actions. And uh, certain actions go together with certain policies. So for example, uh, at first we set the policy to disallow, and then we check for things uh, that we want to disallow, actions that we want to disallow. Uh, and then we set the policy to uh, the, one of the Java policies for the Java permissions uh, actions, because they require that. Uh, then there's one for .NET, which is kind of undocumented, doesn't have like a proper name. And then uh, there's a bunch of things that we also want to allow, so we set policy to allow, and then we check for those. Um, <clears throat> so we set the policy to, to disallow. And then we just do a bunch of uh, checks here. We once again check um, if it's a file, right? If it's a file, then we do the, the default just like before. And then we check for flash. This is a bit of an interesting thing. So when I was first writing this, Microsoft had announced that they were going to remove flash from Internet Explorer, but they had not yet done so. And so I didn't know how they were going to go about removing Flash from Internet Explorer, but I was concerned that if curators curated games that used Flash in the Flashpoint Secure Player, um, that when that Windows update happened, uh, that all those games would break. And so I wanted to intentionally disable Flash in the Flashpoint Secure Player, uh, so that way the curators wouldn't 
have the false impression that that their games would work uh, when they were in fact uh, bound to eventually break when that update came. Uh, and so that way they would be encouraged to use uh, Flashpoint's other tools to curate Flash games instead. Uh, and we would avoid that problem of them all breaking uh, in the future. And so that's what this is about. So remember, this is the uh, function that's going to allow ActiveX controls to run. So what we do is we check the context, because we also get passed in this context variable, which basically gives us the unique ID of the plugin that is requesting a particular action. And so we can check if that is the uh, flash player's ID with this uh, flash context variable. If it's equal to that, uh, then we disallow the uh, policies, um, <clears throat> except for one. There's one that's kind of backwards, which is that uh, we want to treat flash as an untrusted control, so we allow that policy, but we disallow all of the rest. And remember, um, one of those actions that it's going to request is the one that allows the ActiveX control to run. So what this means is that when Flash requests for the ActiveX control to run, we are going to disallow it because we're, we've set the policy to disallow. Um, <clears throat> and then we also check uh, for the SWF file extension. We check for that too, just in case. If the URL has an SWF file extension, then we also disallow that, so we disallow Flash. Uh, there is a hidden dev flag that you could use to bypass this entirely. That's what this variable here is about. But I didn't really document that because I didn't want people to just uh, use that without understanding really what it did. Uh, they, I wanted them to, to come to me first and let me know uh, so that we could try and, and work around the issue. Uh, but you can circumvent this check, and if you do, it'll just give you a little warning that this might break in a future update. <coughs> so after that, once again, uh, we use the same test internet URI uh, function, and then there's some specific things that we disallow, uh, and then there's Java. Uh, so for the Java permissions, uh, you're supposed to set this to Java low, medium, or high, uh, and so we do that. Uh, and one thing that I was a little bit confused about for a while here is what to return here. The documentation says that you should return SOK uh, if the policy is URL policy allow, um, and it, that you should return uh, S false for all other values. What I was confused about is uh, with something like this, it's not technically URL policy allow, uh, but we're still not prohibiting Java from running. Like, we're still allowing. Java to run. So uh, is it specifically for the URL policy allow that I should be returning uh, SOK, or uh, is it for any time that we're allowing anything? And I was a little bit confused about this for a while. In testing, uh, it didn't seem to make any difference which one that I used, but I still wanted to use the you know, technically correct one. Um, eventually, I, I found some official Microsoft code that used SOK for the Java URL policy, and so I figured that is the correct thing to do. And then we come to the stuff that we want to allow. Um, and you might be wondering, why is this structured as just like a giant if? Uh, like, why not use like a list? Well, um, the thing about using an if here is that if we have to check for um, if the action is within some ranges, like if it's between a minimum and maximum number here. And so the vast majority of the time, it's going to be in one of these ranges. And so uh, if we use this structure, then we catch that right away, right? It's going to be, you know, one of these first few conditions here that, that we catch. Um, whereas if this was in just like a list and it was just binary search, uh, then you don't have that benefit. It might have to do a couple lookups in order to figure out that it's in one of these ranges. And of course, we would have to list them all out one by one. Um, so this may look dumb, but it's actually not bad. And uh, just doing all of these checks in a row, right, there's no overhead here. We're not, we don't need to do any loop either. So it's actually not so bad. 
Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we we allow ActiveX, but there's also you know other things that we can allow here, like we can allow JavaScript or uh, we can allow cookies. And you might think, well, uh, what if I don't like tracking? And the thing about that is there's no potential for something like an ad banner to be served in Flashpoint from the live web. Um, <clears throat> that just can't happen because uh, the infrastructure just isn't there for anything in, in Flashpoint to reach the real internet. It's the same reason that Flashpoint doesn't have uh, really any uh, online multiplayer games with specific uh, exemptions. Uh, and so... <clears throat> Even if you don't like tracking, uh, there's really no reason uh, that enabling cookies is bad here because it's all within Flashpoint's safe curated environment. Uh, nothing is actually going to hit the real internet. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is that it's once again, you know, the problem is that you can go into your internet options and your zone settings and uh, just disable cookies uh, system wide, and you might not even realize really what cookies are because people just have this kind of idea in their head that oh, cookies equals bad, so uh, I should disable them, and so they might have gone into their internet options and options and disabled them and completely forgot about it, uh, you know, it might have been years ago, and they don't even uh, remember uh, what they did, or uh, even really understood in the first place what it was supposed to do. So then, it only takes one game in Flashpoint to use cookies as save games, because there are actually you know, a lot of web games that use cookies uh, for save states, because if you don't know, that's that's what cookies kind of do, they, they save the state of something. They aren't programs, right? They're just text. Uh, and so they save, uh, they, they're, they're similar to a save state, and a lot of games use them as save states. And so uh, that could happen, and then you could come complain to us, hey, this game isn't saving. And the issue is, how would we possibly troubleshoot that, right? Um, we, we just can't know that you disabled that in your internet options a few years ago and, and forgot. And uh, the thing about enabling all of these is, is not just ensuring that games won't break, it's ensuring that if they do break, that we will be able to help you solve the problem. And this would be a very difficult problem to troubleshoot, and so you know we enable it so that there isn't any uh, you know, uncertainty of will it work, will it not work, you know, we can't know. Uh, and so that's why we allow all of these things. Now, in conclusion, it was actually really difficult to find any information about what all these policies did until I found uh, this document called Zone and Settings in Deep. And this is just this massive document that explains uh, every single one of these policies and what specifically it does. And so this was really useful for, for research. Uh, you'll notice it's in German. So I had to Google Translate it, but once it's Google Translated, uh, it does it does a pretty good job on, on German. I was able to follow along with it uh, pretty easily after Google Translating it. Uh, and this was an invaluable resource for knowing exactly what uh, all these policies were and uh, what uh, they will do if they're enabled or disabled specifically. And so um, I'll try and remember to include a link to this in the description if you want to, if you're interested in this kind of thing and, and want to look at you, this yourself. Um, and with that, I'll see you in the next video.